In this video, we're going to cover the Understand Wireless Networking objective in the MTA Networking Fundamentals exam. Some things that we want to, or some terms that we want to define is access point. An access point is sometimes called a wireless access point or WAP, and this is a device that, um, that we use to uh, coordinate communications or we use to connect other wireless devices. And then we have a uh, service set identifier or SSID. This is going to be the name of the network, and um, we're going to use that to help group devices together. Um, a security protocol that we might use for that is if we, we can actually set up our wireless access point to not broadcast our SSID. And what that would require is for a device to connect to that wireless access point, we would have to actually type in the SSID or the name of that network because um, it would not be discoverable as it's not being transmitted. Uh, a couple different ways that we can set up a wireless uh, network is the first one is a point-to-point -point wireless architecture. <clears throat> so this is where we just have two devices um, and the the network interface card, uh, the, the transmitter on each one is going to be called a station or STA. And so this is basically, this is this is our, 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 our basic cell. This is our um, just two devices connected to each other. Another uh, another version of P2P or point-to-point -point, uh, wireless connection is an ad hoc wireless network. And so this is where, the, again, the devices are just connecting directly to each other. But then as we can see over on the right, we have five devices that all have established a direct connection with another, with another device. Now, beyond that, we're going to have what's called an infrastructure wireless architecture. And this is where we actually have an access point or a wireless access point that all of the devices are connecting to. So um, with an infrastructure, instead of the devices connecting directly to one another and transmitting and receiving, they're actually going to transmit into this wireless access point, and the wireless access point is then going to direct the traffic from there. Um, the reason that we would see this is because with an ad hoc wireless network, we typically are not going to see that much over... Uh, five to ten devices, and the reason is is that uh, an ad hoc uh, an ad hoc architecture will not support that many dev devices. And then not only that, but it does start to we we do start to have um, transmission issues. And additionally, in a point to point or ad hoc infrastructure, there are no security or encryption. Um, protocols that we can use for that. It's just a, it's just a, a, a radio on our, uh, you know, our, our wireless network interface card transmitting to a receiver on another device, and so it's very easy for it to be intercepted um, because there's there's no encryption or authentication on that type of a uh, on that type of an architecture. So we will use this uh, this infrastructure or this wireless access point to give us an added level of security on our wireless network. These are some of the wireless standards that you'll be responsible for. Um, we've got 802.11a, 802.11b, g, and n. You will also need to know a little bit of information about the AC standard. Um, mostly what you're going to want to know is the, the bandwidth that they operate on and the throughput speed. The throughput speed. So if we look over here, um, the, the two that operate solely on the 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth is the B and the G. And if you look at the bottom, that's actually why they're, they're um, compatible, is because they operate on that same bandwidth. Um, then obviously with those, the, the difference between them is going to be the speed. The 802.11B only transmits at 11 megabits per second, whereas the G networks would transmit at 54 megabits per second. And then if we go to the outside, we see that 802.11a, that one transmits on the 5.75 gigahertz bandwidth, um, and it operates at 54 megabits per second, but the transmission distance is only 150 feet. Now, because this, because this uh, network operates on the 5.7 gigahertz bandwidth, it is not compatible with the B or G networks. Uh, then we see all the way around the right-hand side, we have our N networks. This one can operate on the 2.4 or 5.75 gigahertz um, bandwidths. Now, typically with this, you're going to have multiple antennas, and you have to actually designate which bandwidth that antenna is going to transmit and receive on. Um, so some of the issues that we might see with compatibility backwards 
is uh, let's say that you had that you were only intending to use the the end network with B and G devices backwards compatibly. Then what you're going to do is you're just going to set up all of the antenna to transmit and receive on the 2.4 gigahertz. And so even though this networking standard would allow for compatibility with the A networking devices, it's not going to be able to connect with them because you don't have any antenna set up that way. Now we see here that this is where we're getting into some um, kind of more modern transmission speeds. Uh, the 802.11n gives us 600 megabits per second and can transmit up to 1200 uh, feet. Um, and it is backwards compatible with A, B, and G, again, depending on how you configure the antenna. And then we also have the 802.11ac standard. And what you're going to want to know with that one is that the transmission rate is 1.3 gigabits per second or 1300 megabits per second. Now we're going to talk about some wireless authentication. Um, and remember what authentication is, is that's where we are asking a device to um, kind of identify itself and we're going to check to make sure that that device is supposed to be connected to our network before we allow it uh, to transmit and receive. Uh, so the first thing that we want to talk about is open authentication. So open authentication, it, it simply just requires a MAC address. Like we, we set up authentication based on MAC addresses that we either want to exclude or include. Um, and as we'll see later, this isn't very, this really isn't a very secure authentication method because uh, MAC addresses are, you can spoof a MAC address and then uh, therefore bypass the open authentication. Then we also have shared key authentication. And so with shared key authentication, this is where we have like a password or a passphrase and we set that up on the wireless access point and then um, like if I if some, say I have shared key authentication on my wireless access point at home, if someone were to come over and want to connect to my Wi-Fi, I would have to give them that, that shared key or the secret or passphrase. And that's not something that's transmitted over the, the, the network. That's something that I would actually physically communicate. Um, and then we have 802.11x authentication. And that's where we're actually using um, – uh, we're, we're using – uh, usernames, passwords, and other things like smart cards to authenticate wireless clients. And this is typically going to involve um, external authentication from like a radius server. And uh, so this is not just a shared key, but this is where we would we would use their um, their participation or their access to a domain, like a domain name, uh, username, and password to give them access to various um, wireless access points. And so this is obviously a lot more complex, um, but it's also one of it, it's also much more uh, secure because of the encryption standards that we can use with 802.11x. Um, some also all other things that we want to be aware of is something called interference. And so when we have interference on on a wireless network, that's any other signal that kind of inter that it corrupts or destroys the signal by our access points and our devices. Um, this would be uh, interference would be uh, if, if there's another device or network that's operating on the same bandwidth. Um, one of the examples that we see a lot in the, in the um, exam questions is a wireless uh, phone system that is transmitting on the same bandwidth as our wireless access point. Uh, but really it's just any time we have another type of signal that's competing with our wireless access point. And then we have uh, data emanation, and the uh, understand uh, the idea of data emanation is that it, it, all of our wireless access points they're sending out radio signals from from that point, and uh, we can have omnidirectional, which just kind of sends it out in in kind of like a circle around that point, or we can have directional, where we can point it in a in a specific direction. And the idea here is if we have say like an office. Um, if we set up that wireless access point near a corner or near an exterior wall, if it's if it's large and if, if the if we can if if we can um, transmit that radio signal far enough to cover the office, then it's also going to be transmitting outside of our office to the to the areas adjacent to our building. Um, and the problem with data emanation is that when that signal is going outside of where we can uh, you know physically secure, then anyone um, anyone can 
um, access that radio signal. So, for instance, uh, they could just pull up to the parking lot outside of our building, and we would have no idea that they're trying to break into our wireless network um, because we don't have uh, physical security over that area. So here we see this is open system authentication. So the 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 uh, device sends an authentication request, giving its MAC address. The system authentication receives it, it, it receives you know sends back says hey yeah it looks like you're authenticated and then the client connects. Again, this is a very uh, this is not a very secure connection because it just relies on MAC addresses which can be um, faked. Here we see um, just a little bit more like uh, talking about like a shared key. So we have um, one of the one of the protocols that we don't see up here is WEP, and that is wireless equivalent protection. And we don't use that one because it's very insecure. Basically, all it's doing is it's uh, it's only allowing the same kind of security that we would see over a wired connection, which is no authentication, uh, no. It, it's basically just saying. It, it's like using a wire instead of the wireless connection. And so uh, we really shouldn't ever find ourselves using a web um, security. Here we see WPA, and this uses the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the token um, protocol. And so basically what this is, is there's, there's keys that are rotating. And we, we can use this with our, our uh, TKIP. And so this would be a again a shared key that we would we would um, physically share with another person, and they would use enter that into their device. Or we can also um, with WPA we can use the 802.11, and so that would um, allow us to connect it to like a radius server that would uh, validate that device based on a username and password. Um, then we also have WPA, which uh, came after WPA, obviously with the two. And that's actually going to use the, um, the a, a higher encryption standard. And this AES is actually the encryption standard that is required by federal government uh, for their communication standards. And so obviously if we have the ability to use our WPA2, we want to use that one. And again, we can use this with a shared, uh, a shared key or the 802.1x um, uh, protocols which would allow us to connect a radius server. Um, this is how the radius server would work. So the, the the device over here on the left, it's going to attempt to connect to the wireless access point. And so the wireless access point is going to ask for some sort of uh, auth uh, authentication. And so the device is going to send over a username and password. The username and password is going to uh, send that information over to the radius server. The radius server is going to say yes or no based on the, the tables and, and, and databases connect, uh, stored in that radius server. If it says yes, it's going to send that authentication, go ahead back to that uh, wireless access point and the wireless access point will connect. So that is understand wireless networking um, objective for the MTA networking fundamentals exam.